Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and we're going to be doing some um, drawing lessons based on shapes. And the themes of these drawing lessons are going to be all about animals. So for today, we are going to do pigs. So what I have here are crayons, but you also can have markers or colored pencils, a 9 by 12 piece of paper, uh, a ruler, pencil, pen, um, also paintbrush, and a water bowl. And then I have two different styles of, um, or different brands of craft paint, acrylic paint, that you can find fairly cheaply, anywhere between 50 and 75 cents a bottle, depending on where you're at. Um, obviously this paint will stain, but I always try to use the best quality um, supplies so that kids get uh, a chance to really use the supplies in the element in the way that it, it it's used. So they really enjoy the process of using the product as well as the process of creating. All right, so gather your things and we'll be back here in just a moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, a line uh, horizontally and vertically um, and break this paper up into four quadrants. If you are working with older children, you can go ahead and have them do it. As you can see with my piece of paper, I um, actually don't have them evenly spaced, but if you would like to um, uh, incorporate um, a math lesson as well um, have your children figure out what would be the halfway point with using a ruler or with smaller kids you might want to go ahead and just set this up for them before you start so what i begin with in this lesson is i do a little bit of directed instruction so i would invite the students to first draw one rectangle in square one in square two, I would have them draw two rectangles or squares, one a little bit to the right and a little bit below. Then I would have them turn their page and draw just a rectangle diagonally. And then finally, I'd have them draw one rectangle or square above another rectangle or square. So next we would talk about the main components that make a pig a pig. Most times they'll say things like the snoot, so we'll draw the snoot. Then the pointed ears. On this pig, we also added the eyes and the eyebrows. We added an additional square so we could draw some clothing. And then the hooves. I would then invite them to finish up the rest of the drawing using this type of symbolism. So here, this would be an adult, a grown-up, and a child. On this one, we'd have the idea of the saying, uh, when pigs fly, and we would have a fun uh, story about what that means. And then finally, this would be stacking one pig on top of another pig's head.
Next, we would talk about putting a little more into the scene of the paint of the picture. So, for example, if we put a horizon in, we would assume this is him walking around or her even, and maybe we make this a girl with a fun little dress. Maybe she has some feathers in her hair. And maybe she's dressed up for Halloween, so I'd put a little pumpkin. into the picture. In this next scene, maybe they're outside going for a walk. A tree in the background. And maybe the sun is outside. In the third picture, well, he's in the sky, so I'd put some clouds and maybe just a little bit of a background that shows that he is off the ground. And then finally, we could just have a little story of maybe they are outside of their house. Maybe it's like the theme from the three little pigs. Can make one that looks like hay. And then, of course, one that looks like brick. And then a normal looking house. So now we're going to begin to paint the pigs and there's a, a sweet little way to start treating, uh, teaching about shading is by maybe using two different types of the pink acrylic paint and then working th with them to explain um, how to um, create different subtleties in um, the, um, the skin on the pig. So we could even do different things like painting one pig one color, another pig the other color. Um, maybe shading just the um, wings with one of the uh, colors of the pink, uh, pink spectrum and then doing the face with a different spectrum. But I do direct that they only use the pink on the pigs and then the background they'll be using the crayons or the markers or the colored pencils that you have. Now another fun way to play with subtleties in color is if you have um, pink crayons or pink uh, colored pencils or pink watercolor paint and then the theme is just completely pink which just kind of throws everything out the door as far as that the pumpkin has to be orange or um, or that the sun needs to be yellow and again another fun way to help children to which they already do but remind them that they can truly make this painting however they want to make it. going to uh, once the paint has dried and um, and the students are finished creating however they want and some of them might even want to paint the background and you can feel free to add um, watercolor um, to this project as well if you have it handy then what I would instruct them to do is to take a black pen or a black marker and outline all the details on on the whole um, painting Alright, so here's the finished um, um, painting that I created as a sample. And again, you can feel free to do this without a sample. A lot of times when I am teaching art, I actually don't do a sample, but it just depends on what your um, students are used to having. Um, I also find it's really great um, to build imagination to just do a directed drawing where I basically do, like I did at the very beginning, explain um, what uh, each of the different um, squares are and where they're supposed to go in the quadrants and then kind of move from there. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for coming coming by Josie's Art School. Thank you.